Greetings everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am here to discuss about the lesson 2 of the book 21 lessons of the 21st century which is written by Yuval Noah Harari. But before we get into the discussion of lesson 2, let's have a quick recap of what we had discussed in the previous video in lesson 1. We had discussed that the world had been provided with three grand stories. The liberal story, the communist story and the fascist story. We also saw that over the years the liberal story overpowered both the communist and the fascist story. We even discussed that looking into the present scenario, it is pretty evident that the year 2019 and the year 2020 is storyless. And a world being storyless is the most dangerous situation that the humankind can ever face. We even discussed the rapid growth in infotechnology and biotechnology. So guys, without any further ado, let's get into the lesson 2 work. We have no idea what the world is going to look like in the year 2050. It is generally believed that machine learning, artificial intelligence and robotics will change almost every single line of work. Some people believe that within a mere decade or two, billions of people are going to lose out on their jobs. While on the other hand, some believe that with the growth in inf uh, info technology and the growth in artificial intelligence and machine learning will help in creating more jobs and greater prosperity for all. While discussing about this, let me give you a very small and an interesting example. The National Highway Traffic Association of America stay estimated in 2012 that 30% of the total death crashes that took place in 2012 were because of the consumption of alcohol, 30% because of speeding and 20% because of distracted drivers. Now my dear friends, let's just assume that the drivers have been replaced by self-driving cars which have none of these flaws, which neither drink which neither overspeed themselves and which are not careless like humans are. We could see a fall in death rate by more than 80%. But while we're talking about the positives, there are certain negative aspects as well. It is estimated that by the end of the year 2020, 3.5 million professional truck drivers in the United States of America itself are going to lose out on their jobs. Now my dear friends, we're just talking about the United States of America. We're not taking into consideration countries with high amount of population like India and China. If a country having sparse population like that in the United States of America 3.5 million people will lose out on their jobs. We cannot even imagine its impact in countries like India and China. Rather than replacing humans entirely, AI might actually help in creating more jobs. Instead of humans competing with AI, they could focus on servicing and leveraging artificial intelligence. The market of 2050 is more focused on the human and artificial intelligence cooperation rather than the competition. Now I'll give you a very interesting example regarding this. Several years back, IBM came up with its deep blue algorithm, which had defeated the then chess master, grandmaster Gary Kasparov. But it was seen that when the Deep Blue competed with the opponent, which was a cooperation of artificial intelligence and human creativity, it always lost. But, however, in recent years, the computers have become so good at playing chess that the human collaborators have started to lose their value, which could be seen as a precursor to what might happen in the pervasive level. 
Now, while we've discussed about this, let's talk about artificial intelligence and creativity. It was always believed that machines can never replace humans because of two major facts that humans are extremely creative and machines can never be as creative as humans. And it was believed that machines can never be as compassionate as humans are. Looking at the present scenario, we can see that the compassion is still aced by humans. And there's a huge scope in the job opportunities in fields relating to compassion, which are the job of nurses, the job of a caretaker, the job of a nanny. But when we are talking about the creative level and our statement that humans are more creative than computers looks like an antediluvian thought. My dear friends, Computers have already surpassed humans in the creativity level. Now giving you an example of a chess tournament, whenever there's a chess tournament taking place, the judges are always on a lookout whether the players are cheating or not. And they determine this by looking at the creativity level of the move. If the move is extraordinarily creative, they determine that this move cannot be made by human alone and there is a role of artificial intelligence and algorithm in this play. When I'm telling you this statement and giving you this example, what I'm trying to say that chess, in the field of chess, computers and algorithms have already overpowered humans in the field of creativity. By the year 2050, not just the idea of job for life, but the idea of job for profession might also sound an anti-Devluvian idea. While some jobs for sure will become obsolete, it does not mean that all the jobs will vanish. My dear friends, new jobs will get created. Taking the example of industrial revolution, when automatic machinery came into the market, the machinery very quickly replaced the manual labor because of the cheap production cost. But that did not mean that at that time humans lost out on all the jobs because when machinery replaced them in the manual work, new jobs were created for them. They started managing the machinery. So what I'm trying to say my dear friends is that when you lose out on one job during a revolutionary process, new jobs are created. However, I totally believe that there will be a large number of job losses that will take place in the economy. But the job losses that will take place would be more of process oriented jobs. Like, let's be honest here, who wants to be a cashier all his life? Who wants to work in a call center taking up calls all day long? What we really need to focus on is provide people with basic needs and protect their self-worth and their social status. This can be done using two methods. The first method, universal basic income. Universal basic income is a government policy of providing people grants and monthly stipend without any work. This will protect the poor against job losses and economic dislocation and the rich against the populist rage. Now, the question that arises in many of our minds is that, all right, this universal basic income is a good idea, but how will the government raise so much amount of money? They'll raise this money by hugely taxing the high and the big tech companies. But again, there are certain flaws in the universal basic income as well, especially in developing countries like India where 70% of the population is below the poverty line and 10% of the people control most of the national income. Alright, so even if you tax the big tech companies, how many people can you reach out to? There are several alternates for the UBI, that is the universal basic income, and the most appropriate alternate being the universal basic services. The government can provide the people with universal basic services. 
instead of directly providing them income and giving them the right to purchase whatever they want from that money, we can provide people and subsidize services like free education, free transport, free healthcare, etc. This will successfully bring the communist plan to fruition, albeit not by revolution. The problem with universal basic income and universal basic service is that human beings aren't just built for satisfaction. Human happiness depends less on satisfaction and more on our own expectation. As things continue to improve, our expectation also start increasing. So even a dramatic change or improvement in conditions might leave us as dissatisfied as never before. Today's poor lives a life better than yesterday's kings. But still, it is being seen that in developed countries, antidepressants are being taken in astounding numbers. People need not only the basics, but they need to understand that they have enough, they don't need more, and their contributions are worthwhile, and they have access to the whole community. With that, we come to the end of the second lesson. Thank you so much guys for watching my video. If you liked my YouTube video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you always get a notification whenever I post a new video. Thank you so much and stay safe.